Hello, in this video we're looking at quizzes and we're going to go through and look at how we can create a self-marking mass quiz using quizzes. So if you're looking at the other features of quizzes, then if you click in the banner in the top right hand corner, you can watch my video playlist where I go through other aspects of using quizzes. But in this one, we're going through how to create a self-marking mass quiz. So I've already started by clicking create and adding a title. So we're going to go and click onto this one and click editing and then we're going to make it up of multi choice questions so hopefully you're familiar with that you can change the question type I find the multiple choice works best for for a self marking a quiz and then we've got various options we can add an audio file so we could we could we could speak the the, the mass problem we could do a little video of it we can add an image or in this case we're going to add using the mass equation function. So if we click onto that, we can add in our sum. So I'm gonna keep it nice and simple, but you can see you've got all of the various mass symbols that you require. So I'm just gonna do a very simple sum here. And then having edited that, you click insert and that appears in there. And then you can start to add your options. and you can select which one is right. If you pay for the premium version of quizzes, you can add in uh, a some feedback, but that will say that it's been correct. You've selected the correct question. You can delete any questions that you don't want. And then you can also adjust from this drop down menu, the time at the bottom of how long you want them to work it out. So I think, I think 30 seconds is fine. And then hit save. So we've added the first question. We've got a choice, we could duplicate that question or we can just add another question. Again, I'm gonna stick with the multiple choice question type and we'll do the same thing again. We'll click on the mass equation. And again, let's say all these symbols, you've obviously got Greek and you've got advanced mass symbols as well. So there's a loads of functionality there. But again, we're just gonna keep it very straightforward Uh, and insert that. And again, we're gonna make sure that we've put in our answers. I like to try and make sure that I vary so the correct answer isn't always the middle answer, otherwise they get into a pattern and they can just potentially guess what the answer is. Again, select the correct answer, delete the other ones that we don't want, and hit save. So you can see we've got two questions. Let's add one more question. So we'll add our last question again, click on the mass symbols and we can add in our questions. So let's make this a division. And insert, and then we can put in our answers. And select the correct one. We're happy with the time allowed, we can delete the, the spare question and hit save. So we've now got our questions in play. We could add a, a quiz if we wanted to, but I'm happy with that. So we can hit done. And this is where it gives you an option to, so we can set the language, it's English, we could set the grades. So this is just professional development and we can set who can see it. I'm happy for it to be available publicly and you can hit save. So we've now got our quiz ready. Uh, now we've got the option, the option to show answers. I like to hide that because if I shared my screen with my students, they'd be able to see the correct answers. So it's nice that they're hidden there. I've got then choice at how I want to do this. I can start a live quiz or I can assign it for homework. So if we click the assign for homework function, we can set when it has to be done by, and that gives us a, a length of how long they've got available. So it's quite useful to be able to do that. And then you can also set various options here. Let's go back and we'll play a live quiz instead. So to start a live quiz, we're gonna go a classic. So this, the difference between classic and instructor paste is classic is um, this, the students work through the questions at their own time. 
and that's how I prefer it. If you want to do the instructor pace, that's very much like Kahoot, where after each question, the tutor decides when to move on to the next question. So I prefer to do the classic one, then each student is working at their own pace. What's also happening is each student is seeing questions in a different order. So if students are sat next to each other, if you're doing this in an actual classroom as opposed to distanced, they're not seeing the same question at the same time. So let's go with the classic function uh, and we can choose how we're gonna do this. So we could do it as a test. Um, and this, as it says, requires a logon um, and it removes all of the frills and all of the other elements. That's fine. Uh, and potentially if you're doing it in a class, that's the one to use for. I'm happy with the classic function. And then as we go down, we can choose, if we were adding it to a, a Google Classroom or a Teams, we, we could choose select and, and ha have our group of students as a list. I'm just gonna let anyone join. And then you can see how many attempts, unlimited. I, I think I'm happy with two attempts, but it will require a logon. So that's what you've got to weigh up. Do you want them to be limited and require them to log in or not? I find that potentially asking the students to log in can add a barrier. So let's go with just unlimited for the moment. Um, we're not having that. Show answers during activity. So I like to do that. I'll leave that as off. Show answers after activity, yes. So I'm happy for them to see the answers before. I don't want any gimmicks of power up. For each question, yeah, I'm happy for that. I don't want, in this case, to show a leaderboard. I'm happy for the questions to shuffle and I don't want memes shown. So you can choose those settings each time you set a quiz. Leaderboard, you need to decide on your students. Some groups find it a real motivation to have the leaderboard pop up. Others find it a bit disheartening if they never appear at the top of the leaderboard. So it's your choice. And then you're ready to go. We click continue. And this is how the students join. So if we copy that link and we'll just open a new tab. If we do it actually, if we do it as a new, a new instance of Chrome and paste that in there, we can tag, we can toggle between the two. I can turn off the music and the sound effects and start. So that's what the student is seeing. So if I toggle back, I can see there I am. If I hit start now, and I will kill the sound in a moment. So we'll turn the sound down and I'll toggle back to the student view and I can start putting my answers and you can see already that the questions are coming in different order to, to the ones that I did. And last question, we'll get that one wrong. The end, so that's what the student is seeing. Now the student can start to see their answers so they can review their answers. You can see, they can see which, that they got that one wrong. And if we click on the question, it says this was the correct answer. So that's what you answered and that was the correct answer. And they can click through and they can do with that with each of the things, which pull up a little bit further so you can see, they can see each of their answers and see which ones they got right and which ones they got wrong. So that's how you create a mass quiz. And as I say, they can see that. They can also see them as study cards. So you could set, if this was something you covered in class for some revision, if they click on the study flashcards, this is how it appears. So again, and you can flip it so they can start to see. And you go to next. And again, you've got the flashcard there and then flip next and you can do that. So that's what the student can see. If we just toggle back to the teacher view, as a teacher, I can see who's entered. I can see which questions they got right or wrong. And if I want, I can view it as questions as well. I, I'm, I'm happy with the overview. Uh, and it, there's also an option to send a report to parents. So really useful way of creating a self-marking mass quiz using quizzes. So I hope you found the video useful. If you did, remember to give it a like, remember to subscribe to the channel and join me again soon for more EdTech videos. Thanks for watching.